Good afternoon, everyone in lovely Iceland, coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Um, my name is Ayesh Rajshekran. Uh, I'm from the Lotus team. Um, and, you know, we, we heard uh, from Juan already uh, a little bit about Lotus. Um, I do see that we're running a little late, but the good news is that Juan and I touched on a lot of the same themes, so I can maybe go a little bit faster. Um, if you are watching this recording after and have an additional 15 minutes, I'd suggest watching Juan's talk first, uh, because the two connect together quite well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to speak uh, about Lotus, so thank you, thank you for inviting me to speak today, and thanks to everyone who helped put this event together. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure it wasn't easy. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive right into it in the interest of time. Um, I have a somewhat experimental approach to this talk uh, in that I've structured it entirely uh, based on some questions that we're going to raise, some of which we'll get quick answers to, and others of which you know, we'll just try to unpack a little bit. Um, and it's a, it's a somewhat open-ended, almost philosophical uh, theme that I'm trying to deliver here. Um, so jumping into it, okay, so here's, here's, some, here's the questions that we're going to try and tackle today, some of which are easy and we've already talked about, so what is Filecoin and what is Lotus? Um, and some of which are less easy. In particular, uh, I want to ask the question of, is Lotus an IPFS implementation? Um, which obviously begs the question of, what is an IPFS implementation? And I'm not going to tackle that. Uh, I'm assuming that some of those conversations have already happened uh, today and will happen over the rest of the week. Uh, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, the second question, and this directly brings, uh, overlaps with what Juan was talking about, people often ask whether Filecoin and IPFS interoperate, and as Juan said, this is not really a well-formed question. Filecoin and IPFS are both, at the same time, kind of protocols and products and networks, and so asking whether or not they interoperate just really isn't, doesn't make the most sense. What we can ask, and what we will talk about, is whether Lotus and Kubo, which are implementations uh, of Filecoin and IPFS respectively, uh, interoperate. I phrase these as binary questions. We're not really going to get to a yes or no answer, um, and some, because in many ways it comes down to perspective. I would kind of argue the answers are closer to yes, uh, but like I said, it's, it's somewhat philosophical. What we will do is try and kind of pull at some of these threads and uh, uh, explore the nature between, uh, between the pieces of software a little bit more. Uh, so what is Filecoin? If you've watched Juan's talk, um, uh, you, you've gotten a better uh, overview of this, but it's a decentralized storage network designed to store humanity's most important information. Uh, it is crypto powered. Um, and for our purposes today, we'll really split Filecoin into two pieces, um, which is Filecoin, the blockchain protocol, uh, which kind of has these consensus rules and this distributed ledger that's a series of blocks on a blockchain. Uh, and the second piece is Filecoin as a storage network, uh, which leverages that blockchain component uh, in order to transact storage and retrieval deals. Um, and these are two kind of fairly separate things, and they lead to two separate use cases in many ways. Really, Filecoin has a lot more than just those two pieces, as you can see, but we won't dive into that. Uh, we already saw some stats about Filecoin. Uh, so with that, we'll jump into what is Lotus, and to give a little bit more, um, the most common answer to this question, and we're just going to reiterate on definitions of Lotus uh, for, for this talk, the most common answer to this question is that Lotus is a reference, reference implementation of the Filecoin protocol. Um, it's built by the PL Andreas team. And so what this means, or what it means to be an implementation of, a, of any blockchain protocol, really, is that you need to correctly implement the detailed the rules of the consensus of the protocol, uh, and you need to have some way to uh, connect to the network and fetch and receive data. So in our case, we need to be able to identify peers on the Filecoin network. Uh, we need to sync the Filecoin blockchain uh, by fetching those blocks. These are Filecoin blocks, not IPFS blocks, so these are blocks in the blockchain sets. So we need to fetch those blocks and then validate them using those rules. Um, a quick aside here uh, that's not super relevant to this talk, but that it, to me is why I like working on Filecoin. Uh, this means that if you are running a Lotus node, you are verifying the continued storage of 17 ebibytes of data, 17.8 ebibytes of data every single day. So my desktop right here that's running a Lotus node is doing that every day. And to me, that is miraculous. Not relevant to this talk. Um, so, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so primarily those are the two things that, it, that you have to do if you are a reference implementation of Filecoin or any implementation of Filecoin. Uh, it's written in Golang which is relevant to some of what we'll talk about today. Uh, and just as Juan was talking about how Filecoin and IPFS interoperating isn't a well-formed question and that Lotus and Filecoin are not the same thing and that Kubo and Go IPFS are not the same thing, I just want to reiterate as well because it is easy to have a misconception here. Lotus is not Filecoin. Lotus is tied to the rules of the Filecoin protocol. We need to implement whatever the Filecoin protocol is, as does every other implementation, and there are many others. Uh, but otherwise, we are free to kind of like exchange data and identify peers and so on in our own way. Um, 
Okay, so that, that's our starting definition of Lotus. And now we'll get to one of the potentially naughtier questions, which is whether Lotus is an IPFS implementation. Um, and in order to unpack this, we'll go back to that definition that we just had of what is Lotus. Well, it's identifying peers, it's thinking the blockchain. So how is it doing these things? Uh, well, in order to identify peers in the Filecoin network, it's using libp2p. Uh, in order to think the Filecoin blockchain, it uses gossip sub, bit swap, and uh, at least one other protocol. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, and given that it's written in Golang, it's using the Golang implementations of all of these modules. Um, okay, so that's fine. Um, so we can. So now we have this new definition of Lotus. Uh, that's. Uh, potentially moving into somewhat more familiar territory away from kind of the blockchain and crypto side of things to stuff that's uh, closer closer to home for uh, for folks here. Uh, so we can say that Lotus is a libp2p node that uses gossip sub to become aware of new blocks in the Filecoin blockchain, uh, uses a custom libp2p protocol that we call chain exchange, it just lives within Lotus, to fetch Filecoin blocks, uh, and uses BitSwap to fetch missing Filecoin blocks and Filecoin messages. Uh, and if it sounds like we're doing the same thing in three different ways, we kind of are. Uh, and I could go into more detail about like, and the, basically you use th these different approaches based on what stage of syncing you're at. Um, if we have time at the end, <laughs> which I doubt we will, uh, we can go into more detail there, but that's not really the focus of this talk. Um, so that's cool, but there's one missing piece here that uh, that we already heard about from Juan as well, which is that everything on the Filecoin protocol is IPLD data. Any block on the Filecoin blockchain is IPLD data. Any message, which is kind of Filecoin's term for a transaction in Ethereum parlance, is IPLD data. Which means we can very slightly tweak this in an almost mathematical way to get to this statement, now, that Lotus is a lib P2P node that's basically using gossip sub and bit swap to fetch IPLD data. Um, and because it's written in Go, we can come to kind of this thesis statement, if you will, which is that Lotus uses the Golang implementations of the IPFS stack to fetch and share IPLD data. That is a true statement, uh, as we've kind of just walked through. Whether or not that makes Lotus an IPFS implementation, I will allow the folks at the, con at, uh, the event to discuss. I think the answer is yes. Um, so that's cool. And this is, this is Lotus um, implementing the Filecoin protocol protocol, kind of the Filecoin as a blockchain protocol side of things. Uh, when you view Lotus as serving that purpose, it's using the IPFS stack to fetch and share IPLD data. Um, but as we discussed, Filecoin isn't just a blockchain protocol, it's also the storage market for clients and storage providers to find each other and make deals. Um, so we can start with a separate definition of Lotus, which is really a second function entirely that Lotus provides in many different ways. It just happens to be in the same piece of software. Um, and using that second definition, we'll try to answer this question about whether Lotus and Kubo are interoperate. So that second definition is that Lotus is something, is a piece of software that's used to store data on the Filecoin storage network. Store and retrieve data, but for the scope purpose of this talk, we'll only discuss storage uh, because it, it gets to the same thing. In order to do that, what does Lotus need to do? Well, it needs to identify storage clients and providers on the Filecoin network. It needs to allow these clients to import data. Uh, it needs to allow these clients to transfer the data that they've imported to storage providers. And once again, I will reinforce that uh, once that happens, storage providers create and provably create a unique replica of this data and then prove every 24 hours for the duration of the storage deal that they are continuing to store that unique replica of that data. And everyone on the Filecoin blockchain and Filecoin network is validating that, which is cool. Um, and as discussed, it's written in Golang. So now we'll apply the same process on this new definition of Lotus. Um, and I won't belabor the point much, and we won't drag it on as much as I did the first time, but how are we identifying storage clients and providers? We're using libp2p. Uh, we're, if we allow clients to import data, what does that process look like? Most folks here are probably familiar, that involves chunking the data, Unix FSFIing it, and so on. Uh, we're allowing clients to transfer this IPLD data to storage providers. Uh, we use GraphSync for this in Lotus. Technically, we use GoData Transfer, which is built on top of GraphSync. Um, I'm not uh, as plugged into the IPFS ecosystem as folks here, uh, so I don't know exactly where GraphSync fits into uh, the broader IPFS picture, but this is a difference from Kubo, uh, which, if I understand correctly, uses BitSwap for this purpose. Um, and yes, given that it's written in Golang, it's using the Golang impulse, uh, implementations of lib 2 p so, so now having looked at Lotus's kind of second purpose, which is as a piece of software to make deals, we wind up getting to the same statement uh, that we got to for the first time looking at Lotus as a blockchain protocol, which is that Lotus uses the Golang implementations of the IPFS stack to fetch and share IPLD data. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm pleased with the time we made. Um, 
I, I don't like this isn't a, this isn't a big aha statement in which it all kind of fits together magically. Um, uh, but uh, I personally get a lot of questions about you know what the exact nature of Filecoin and IPFS is, um, whether one's built on top of the other, whether they interoperate, and so on. And these are complicated questions. So, and I'm sure that folks from the IPFS side of things get the same questions uh, because there's interest in Filecoin as well. So hopefully this kind of try pulls those pieces apart uh, together a little bit more um, and offers suggestions about how, uh, how we can improve interoperability between Lotus and Kubo. Um, I, don't, I don't know this for a fact, but it would not surprise me if there are teams out there right now working on uh, trying, to, trying for Lotus to be able to wire data over BitSwap or for, uh, for Kubo to, be, to use GraphSync in order to achieve greater interoperability there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, my, uh, that's basically my pitch is, uh, yeah, Lotus, Lotus is fundamentally an implementation of the Filecoin blockchain protocol. That is what we do. Those are our users. But all of this stack is built very much using uh, all, all of the software that we have is very much built on top of the Golang implementation, the, st the stack of uh, Golang implementations of the IPFS tech. So the stuff that I've already mentioned from lip 2 p and IPLD, uh, we shamelessly plagiarize uh, Go IPFS or uh, the, the block store and car implementations and so on. Um, we are we are functioning in our own kind of bubble, uh, but the question of Lotus Kubo interoperability, I'm sure, is one that that we'll continue to discuss and iterate on. Um, but that's all I wanted to talk about, and you know, we're, I'm still ten minutes over, but we reclaimed some of our time. Uh, if there are questions, I'm happy to take them, so long as I can hear them, because I'm not sure if I can hear folks in the audience there. Um, but that's my spiel. <laughs>